good sense of humor <laughs> Jesus had a good sense of humor in his ministry and man this one's funny I, and I never looked at it this way before but it's amazing and I ain't sugarcoating nothing so you be prepared you children of God be prepared because I'm gonna nail you with something in the whole process of this next five ten minutes or however long this leads, God leads us. This is gonna be irritating you, and it's gonna chap you, and it's gonna make you butt hurt if you're if you're following the world and not God. So that's gonna make you butt hurt. So be prepared, because I don't sugarcoat the word of God, and I never will, and you know that. But I will get to the point, and it might convict you. Praise the Lord if it does. If you're doing something wrong. It's going to. Let's go over to Luke 9 first. Verse 57. May the Lord have the rich blessing on the word we're about to receive. Anoint our hearts to absorb the word, our ears to hear the word, our eyes to read the word, and our hearts to accept the truth from the Lord our God. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke 9, 57. <laughs> It's just as comical. I never read it this way, but it's amazing. And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee with whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. Oh, excuse me. But he said, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Verse 61, And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, where are at house, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is a fit is fit for the kingdom of God. <laughs> That's priceless. That's as blunt as it can be. <laughs> God has a sense of humor putting you in your place. If you're, you decide to serve God, you decide to serve God, but then you put stipulations on that. Give me one second here. See, I didn't write no notes down. I'm just now just taking notes because I just opened the scripture to this because the first one I thought God wanted me to share with you didn't work. So it just didn't feel anointed that it wasn't time for that, that lesson. It was something personal for me to take but not for me to share at this time and conject and at this time and point. So I had to switch from what I was originally going to teach tonight to Luke 9 57 <clears throat> so just so you understand why I had to stop there and write those notes youtubers but uh, let, let's get into the subject let's get into the meat of this first things first you say Lord I want you to enter in my life I, I want to accept you as my savior but I got these things to do first I got to get this out of my way first before I can serve him not what Jesus says. I gotta, I gotta, gotta go talk to this person. Let him know that I no longer want to be hanging out with him. That's not what he says. 
He says, if you say, follow me, I follow me. Don't say, wait, Lord, I got this to do first. Putting God off. Putting God off is, is tiring the Lord. It's, it's wrong. It's ridiculous. It's stupidity. It's, it's, it's damnation for your soul. It's a quick way to hell. Okay? But to clarify that more, this is not milk. This is strong meat for the, for the adult Christian. So don't expect me to be nice about it, because I'm not. You're going to suffer damnation if you do these things, children of God. You're going to suffer damnation guaranteed. You're going to suffer that damnation for this, because it's going to hurt you in the, in the worst way. God's tired of it. God's tired of the in and out Christianity. God's tired of the on again, off again, half-baked Christianity, I call it. All right? Uh, if you look at it even further, he says right here, let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. He says, don't put all off. He says, go and preach the word of God. Go and give the good news. He doesn't say, do it when you feel like it. Do it now. Not tomorrow. Not the next day. Not after you bury your father that's out in the world. Not if you bury your your friend. That's out in the world. He says, preach the kingdom of God now. Don't wait. Now is the time to preach the word of God. And then I like the next one that he goes to. And he says, another also said, Lord, I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. Go tell your friends goodbye. That's not what God says. And he says, by doing so. By, do, by asking God to wait on you, you're not fit for the kingdom of God because you're not ready to serve God. You're not truly ready. If you got to go and put God on standby, well, you go and take care of your other business outside of God and your, your worldly business. No, you go preach the word of God and be an example. Otherwise, you are unfit for the kingdom of God. You are unfit. You're not a Christian. You're still out there in the world. You're a secular Christian. A weekend warrior, half-baked, on-again, off-again Christian. All right? That's not what God wants. God wants the true, hardcore, servant, God-filled, spirit-filled, desired to live for God, 100%. He doesn't want half-baked Christians. He doesn't want people saying, wait, God, I got to go do this first, and then I can serve you. You don't have time to go do that. And you've already brought judgment on yourself by doing so. I'll serve God tomorrow on Sunday, even though I don't, I don't believe in Sunday worship. I will not do Sunday worship. I'm not a Seventh-day Adventist cult member. I am a I am a Sabbath observing pastor and a Sabbath serving pastor. Not a not an Adventist, but a Sabbath serving pastor. The Lord's day is the day I serve my Lord. But let the dead bury their dead. And when you decide to serve God, there is no looking back. A plow operator, once they put their hand on that plow, they're focused one way, and that's straight ahead. They're not looking back, because looking back, their plow is going to be all over the place. I love that analogy, because it's truth. If you're not looking ahead, that plow is going off into the cornfield and not following the path that it needs to follow. The same goes with Christians. If you're telling God to wait while you go do this, I'll serve you after I'm done here, then you're not ready to serve God, and you're not of God. You're still stuck in your sin. And a lot of people don't get it. Everyone talks about the 12 disciples or the 12 apostles. You know Christ sent out 70 more above them 12? So that means there's 82 apostles and disciples. Or there's 12 major apostles and 70 disciples.
And because we keep saying, wait, God, wait, God, wait, God, we'll serve you later. That's what God's tired of. And these are the 70 disciples he sent out after the 12 to go and spread the good news. But out of that 70, there was these fools. And I said it, fools, to think they could tell God to wait. If you're, Bob, if the man that died on that cross for your sins was buried and resurrected after three days and ascended back up to heaven, tells you to feed his children. And you tell him, wait, I got this to do first. You're not of God. You've turned your back on God. So now, where do you decide? A lot of people know the song, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. <laughs> the minute you tell God to wait, you've turned back. So if you're singing that hymnal on Sunday service or whatever church service you're in, and you say, you say, I have decided to follow Jesus, but you don't follow through and you turn your back on God, then you're not of God. You're still a carnal nature. You're still like carnal Christian. Weekend warriors. This is a message to you dull of hearing. Part two. This is the second time I've gotten, I have to get on this scripture and this subject of dull of hearing, being dull of hearing. You fools. You think God's going to keep tolerating it? You think God's going to keep allowing it to happen? No. He's going to get you for it, and he's going to rebuke you himself. He's going to deal with you. I'm just tired of it. I'm just tired of having to repeat myself. But I'll keep repeating myself. Because for the simple fact that you're not getting it. Now we get over into chapter 10. Um, I'm going to go over to something called the Good Samaritan Message. A lot of people don't realize this. Okay. I want to get on this so that way you can understand. And it's actually um, verse 22, second, or 23. Excuse me, it's verse 23 of Matthew, or Luke 10. And he turned unto him, he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said unto him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answered, said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Hmm. And Jesus answering among Answering said, a certain man went down to Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I'll repay thee. Which now, which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor unto him that fell among thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Do you understand, YouTube? Go and do thou likewise. Okay. Not wait till I get this done first, God, and then I'll help this guy. Wait till I'm a millionaire. No, God says do it out of your out of your heart. Don't let your right hand do know what your left hand's doing, and vice versa. 
You don't put God on hold for yourself. You don't put God on hold. Putting God on hold condemns you to hell. God's given you a job to do, and you're too busy stuck in your carnal Christianity and your false thinking and your self-serving, self-gratifying thinking that you can't even find your way out of the tin can. <clears throat> I hope you got butt hurt on today's scriptures, on today's video. I hope you got butt hurt and that you realize that God's tired of playing games. God's tired of people telling him, wait, God, we'll get to it. I'll get to it in my own time. Jesus could have done that on the cross 2012 years ago. Couldn't he? He could have said, wait, Father, I want to go and party. I want to experience life. I want to rock on. I want to go to a concert, drink a few beers, and party hard before I become sacrificed for man. No. God and his son knew that there was a need for a savior. Came down as of being born by a virgin birth. Grew up. Spent the first 12 years of his life following his parents to every temple and every um, Jewish festival that had to be done as part of the belief. Learning and asking questions. By, third, by the time he was of age, he was already teaching and ministering. He began his ministry, and that lasted up to the time he was about 30 years old. was crucified because he nailed everybody to the truth. He proved a point that needed to be pointed. He was tempted and proven to be a righteous man. He was proven to be the son of God in everything he did. To be mocked, to be persecuted, to be crucified, to be speared. To have a crown of thorns upon his head. To have nails driven in his wrists. Having a single nail through both ankles. All without Novocaine. To be whipped with a metal bladed whip. Nine tails. With razors on the end of it. To, be, to have vinegar stuck on a sponge in his mouth. And sour wine. <clears throat> And when they thought he was dead, they pierced his side with a with a spear, and out came clear water. Living water. There was no blood. He could have said, wait, Father, I don't want to do that yet. I want to spend at least 60 years partying it up like everybody else does before I become the sacrifice. He didn't. He knew his job when he came down from heaven and he stuck to it and he taught us by that example. The least we can do is the same. Luke 9, Luke 10. Look them up for yourself and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm just so baffled at the stupidity and the ignorance of man and mankind. And if they can't grasp it, then the hell they're going to go. They're not of God. And so I, you shake the dust of your feet and you kick off kick rocks and run because they're not of God they're of man and they will and you got to kick rocks to get away from them I'd be doing burnouts probably a, a 300 mile burnout to get away from fools like that well I said enough tonight guys you have a good night God bless you peace no turning back guys quit looking backwards because you're getting nowhere don't be putting God off anymore all right I'll, I'll holler at you again soon Peace.